that have been in this fight for justice, in this fight for establishing true safety for our communities. Hello everybody, happy Saturday and hope all of you are having a great day so far. How's your day been? Tell me in the comments. So in this video, we'll be going over the latest news surrounding a Ford stimulus check. And of course, a $200 increase in your social security benefits. Yes folks, it looks like Congress is finally taking action to help every single American out. And I can't wait for this stimulus bill to be signed into law. So guys, be sure to stay until the end of this video to never miss out on all of the very important stimulus news. The whole goal of this channel is to provide you with the most up-to-date and reliable stimulus check information because we all know that a Ford stimulus check must be passed right now. And if you agree with me, then let's get this video to 1,000 likes. So folks, a sixth batch of $1,400 stimulus payments were just sent out by the IRS. And this is wonderful news for all of you that have yet to receive a third stimulus payment. I know that many of you guys are still missing your third stimulus money. And I completely understand how you all have been feeling these past few weeks. The IRS did not have any new updates or informations for the Americans that have not gotten a stimulus check from the latest batch. But everybody, just today, the IRS sent out another round of stimulus payments. And according to CNBC, more than $379 billion have been sent to Americans through direct payments since distribution began in March. We get a $1,000 stimulus check every single month until the crisis is over. And should your social security benefits be increased by $200 per month? If you believe so, then let's get this video to 1,000 likes. So folks, Joe Biden will make a speech to Congress this week to outline his American family's plan. According to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, the plan is expected to focus on policies, including paid family leave and community college. Jen Psaki also reiterated Joe Biden's pledge not to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. For now, everybody, the White House isn't giving any specifics on the fourth stimulus bill. But details have started to leak out about what Biden is aiming to be the second part of his infrastructure plan. The Washington Post has reported that child care will be one of the largest efforts in the plan. Funding could be roughly $225 billion for this priority. Paid family leave is another key component of Biden's American Rescue Plan, everybody. In addition, guys, Joe Biden has stated that he wants 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave. And this could reportedly cost around $225 billion. Everybody, do you support a Ford stimulus check? If you do, then leave a comment down below saying, I agree. And First Lady Jill Biden said that the president is ready for big ideas in full action. Now folks, dozens of federal lawmakers are calling on the Biden administration to support increasing supplemental security income benefits, growing the asset limit, and making other changes to the program. And this is really good news, everybody. Members of Congress asking Joe Biden to include desperately needed improvements to SSI in his American Families Plan, which is said to be unveiled very soon. So yes, folks, we might actually see an increase for any of you guys that are on federal benefits like SSI or SSDI. But we're going to have to wait and see what Joe Biden says on this. For now, 47 members of the Senate and House Representatives wrote a letter to the President and Vice President. They urged that people with disabilities and adults receiving SI are some of the most marginalized members of our society, and we must address their needs in the recovery effort. Folks, I want you to know this. SSI benefits currently go to about 8 million Americans, many of whom have disabilities. Individuals receive a maximum federal payment of $794 per month from the program, while couples can expect to see around $1,200 a month. Now, in order to remain eligible for this payment, individual beneficiaries can have no more than $2,000 to their names, and couples are limited to $3,000 in assets at any given time. In addition, everybody, the letter says that SI should increase the amount of money that beneficiaries can earn before their benefits are reduced. The lawmakers want rules lowering benefits for those who marry or if individuals accept food or shelter from friends and family to be eliminated. It is likely, everybody, that Joe Biden will agree to these changes. Biden has already expressed support for Social Security and SSI during his federal, during his campaign for the presidency. Uh, let me ask you very quickly on the, there's been some pay fors that, that, Senator, uh, that, that the Biden administration, excuse me, President Biden and the Biden administration put out for part two of the plan that they'll be unveiling next week in the speech to Congress. And we're, 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 seeing, we're hearing all sorts of various tax increase proposals, capital gains increase here, putting up the, the top tax rate uh, for folks uh, above a certain income threshold with 400,000 as the, as the line of demarcation of nobody would get a tax hike there. I'm just curious, is there a, what, what are, where is your sensitivity line on, on the tax hikes here? And do, is, should there be cleaner messaging on this? I mean, I, I would understand if the, if the idea was all income should be taxed the same, but it does look like the way it's rolled out that there's a lot of various tax increases. And I'm thinking about suburban Chicago residents. 
Are you worried you could lose them uh, as, as, as Democratic Party supporters due to some of these tax hike proposals? I think President Biden's break line of $400,000 is going to keep most of those who live in the suburbs uh, happy with the outcome. Uh, I, I will say this. I was in a meeting two uh, years ago. It was almost two years ago to the day when President Trump walked into the meeting and made it clear he was all for an infrastructure bill, but he wasn't for paying for it in any way. He turned around and walked out, end of conversation. So for four years, we had no infrastructure bill. Talked about her relationship with Joe Biden. You know, she's worked with a series, worked with and against a series of of presidents, but I think she is closer to Joe Biden than to any of his predecessors. She says that his long experience on the Hill means that they can speak in shorthand. And she described him as a transformational president. And I think that's what we're going to think. That's what we've seen so far in his first 94 days. I think that's what we're likely to hear on the speech he's going to give his first speech to a joint session of Congress next Wednesday. You know, you look at what he's proposed, what he's proposed in the past two days on climate change, an incredibly ambitious, a bre- a, an am- a breathtaking ambition in terms of cutting emissions in the, the United States. And obviously spending uh, like we haven't seen uh, in, a tr- in an effort to really change some of the fundamentals. So it's great to be with you. And I'm here to talk um, about the American Jobs Plan but to talk about it in the context of what's happening right here in this local. And I actually visited um, in Milwaukee, I guess well over a year ago, a local 494 um, IBEW that is doing similar work. But the work that is happening here is the work of Haley. It is the work of Kelly, who I was with earlier. There you are, Kelly. It is of investing in the skill and the talent and the ambition of our neighbors, of our friends, of people we meet who walk through the door, who want to develop the skills that are going to be a part of building up our economy and like Joe Biden says, building back better. And so thinking about it in that context, I'll say that the American Jobs Plan is about infrastructure. Yes, it's about roads and bridges, it's about childcare, it's about a number of things, but it's about also understanding that if we're gonna build back better, America has to invest in the skills development of our workforce. And to do that, where we're going to get the greatest return on our investment, let's invest in IBEW. Let's invest in the building trades. Let's invest in those apprenticeship programs that, for as long as we can remember, have been some of the best in passing on the skills that are necessary to do the jobs that will build us 